My toe got cold and it wouldn't get warm. <laughs> cool story. Ever. <laughs> I'm Elena, and this is Zarali, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. <laughs> Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. Good morning, everyone. What are we up to this morning, Mr. Biscuit? <laughs> That's right. We're leaving this anchorage and we're going to another. <coughs> Riley's cutting his hair. How's that coming along, darling? Not very well. It's really difficult to get it all the same length. Yeah. Funny that. Go on then. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. I go up and then I'm like, oh, I gotta go up a bit more and then up on this side and it was a lot shorter than I thought. Whatever, let's go sailing. What's in the shadows? Come on, baby, let's go, let's go, little more crazy, let's go. Just in case you didn't know, this is where we've been sailing lately. Going back and forth and in and out of different inlets, exploring the Chesapeake Bay. We recently just left Annapolis and are on our way out, back towards the open Atlantic Ocean. Smile in your eyes, keep it rolling. So we just left South River and we're probably going to go down to Solomon Island. It is cold and like, same as I said to you before about the Chesapeake Bay, it's really gusty and swirly. The winds are quite forceful. I'm glad I put a wreath in. And I just, I really have to man the helm because as the gusts of wind come over and they're pretty unpredictable, it, it doesn't seem to follow the terrain or the geography. It's like every now and then there's just a bullet. And when that happens, I just head downwind a bit until it finishes and then come back on course. It's totally fine, but I have to be paying attention. When I'm really having to concentrate, I go around and tidy everything so I'm not going to fall over anything. Like I've just pulled these ropes through, I'll tidy them up in a sec. Got the mainsail hallied over here. It's the last thing you want is when you need to go and do something and you're falling over stuff. And yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. Being in the Chesapeake is one of those places like the Bahamas because there's just so many different anchorages and we're just bouncing to and from. But yeah, we've been given a list of some locals 10 favourite anchorages so we're trying to hit all of those on our way out. Yeah, basically we came up to Delaware Bay which is really cool. There's a place there called Chesapeake City. It was a gorgeous little spot. And then we hit up Annapolis. We stayed at Pier 7, Marina and a few other anchorages not in the centre of Annapolis. We always prefer to stay out of the city. It's just nicer less wakes in the water. We hate it when there's boats burning past and our boats like moving around. And then we picked up Riley's friend David, took him down to St. Michael's and to a few other little anchorages around there and then back up to Pier 7 Marina. And then Riley and I began this adventure where we're, like I said, bouncing to and from a million different anchorages. So today we're sailing down to Solomon's Island. How far is Solomon's Island, Riles? About 30 miles, I think. 30 miles? Maybe a bit more. Really covering some ground. Changed around a bit, so I've been altering course and tipping down the coast. But nice flat water and bombing along at between 8 and 11 knots basically. We're gonna round this point here, cruise up, the wind should die down a bit, and hopefully we can sail as far up as we can before dropping the sails and heading into Solomon. I don't know what temperature. Oh, we've done a spear. Okay. It's been a late winter, so we've been really lucky. 
but man, today it's got to be like 10 degrees, even less, and like our fingers are stiff. Riley's got gloves on outside. What are we going to do? <coughs> We just had a monohull come so close to us and they had Australian crew and they were just so happy to see us. They came a bit too close to tell you the truth because he wasn't at the helm, he was at the front of the boat waving at us. It was really funny. Yeah, we said hi. We said hi. Riley and I have pretty much been ignoring each other for most of the day. We've been listening to podcasts and books and stuff. It's been so good, hey? Yeah. I don't think I've listened to my audiobook forever. I've been reading my Kindle at night, but I'm usually really tired. Using it as a sleep aid. Pretty much, yeah. It's so warm in here. It's freezing outside. You're nice and warm. My toe got cold and it wouldn't get warm. <laughs> for cool story. Ever. It's because you weren't wearing your Ugg boots. These are essential. Put it in Lenny's mouth so he can suck on it for a bit. <laughs> You can climb the stairs now. I got your back. Go on then. Should we clean up these ropes for dad? Yeah, your pretty face. Drifting on. Start again. Start again. Start again. Just start again. Don't you ruin it. Don't you ruin it. I told you the master vault had some funny words in it. This master vault system controls all of the different things around the boat. Right down the bottom, there's DIS Easy View 5. This Easy View. <laughs> I told you it was funny. This Easy View. What up? I'm gonna go check out Solomon's. This season is so nice because the sun never quite gets high enough so that your light's bad during the middle of the day. Why are you dragging Lenny backwards? Keep his eyes out of the sun and you can't stroll this thing normally through these rocks. <laughs> I just want to take a photo of everything around here. It is so beautiful. Like, look at this house. Seriously. Show me the truth find inside you. Rock it on the street. Look at me. Look at you. Just kind of like scissors. That's and this is what work. you got when you were 18? Yeah, my wow. mother bought me these. And you can see, I've, I've epoxied them and trying to hold them together and make yeah. them work, you know? They're looking a bit rusty. I yeah, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, they're as old as me. I mean, come on, I'm looking a little rusty too, ain't I? <laughs> you know? But you throw them overboard, Yeah. you just open them up. No, Whoa. it's not that easy. It's not that easy. <laughs> you gotta have yeah, oysters. Yeah, everything comes. Boys, just break them. Kind of rake them like you're breaking leaves. Oh, go ahead. There you go. There yeah, it is. Get into it. Woohoo! <laughs> Show me. Rock it on the street. Look at me. Look at you. Only one thing would you really do? So 
Solomon's this morning. Riley got all rugged up and it's actually not even that cold today. It's been really frosty in the mornings like we're always shocked when we open that back door first thing in the morning so Riley got prepared and then it's not that cold. Anyway we're heading as you know south out of the Chesapeake Bay south southwest. <laughs> I've still got to do my never eat soggy wheat bix. Me too. Do you? It's not natural. Anyone else out there that still need to do the never eat soggy wheat bix? Can anyone intuitively just go east. Can anyone north, can anyone west. feel it in their bones? I've seen a documentary where someone doesn't use like their phone for navigation or something like that and they actually learn in a city to navigate their way north and south, not by buildings but by feel, by the sun, just intuitively. Yeah, that's what everyone used to do before phones. Do you mean Yeah, he's blind? fascinating. Do you mean he's no, blind? he's not blind. They did a test. <laughs> He's, not He's just a normal person without a phone. Well, if you think about it, if you're in a city with skyscrapers, you can only see this much sun, right? You can't see land from horizon to horizon. So this person learned to just navigate through a city with skyscrapers. There was a thing like that where someone got electrical stuff put on them. A belt. Yeah, a belt. That a was. Belt. A, is that what you're thinking yeah, of? That's yeah, yeah. It. it was a belt. Whenever they turned north, the belt gave them like a zap. But I think they might have had their eyes closed. Nah. I can't remember. God, thanks for sitting with us through all of that and yeah. my apologies. <laughs> Moving on! Let's hoist the main. Hoist the main? We gotta hoist the main. So, it turns out it's called a field space belt. A study was done by a cognitive scientist, Peter Kong, on a guy called Udo, who worked in admin at a university in Germany. People stared at him as he wore the clunky belt with 13 vibrating pads in it for six weeks. The belt would vibrate when he was heading north. He said it was handy when he was riding his bike and then deep into the experiment he suddenly realised that his perception had shifted. He had some kind of internal map of the city in his head. He could always find his way home and eventually he could never get lost, even in a completely new place. Direction isn't something humans can detect innately. Some birds can of course and for them it's no less important than taste or smell is for us. In fact, lots of animals have cool extra senses. Sunfish see polarised light. Loggerhead turtles feel the Earth's magnetic field and other critters have heightened versions of familiar senses. Bats hear frequencies outside of our auditory range and some insects see ultraviolet light. This particular scientist, Pieter Koenig, questions whether our senses could be modified or expanded. Given the right prosthetics, he wondered if we could feel electromagnetic fields or hear ultrasound. According to researchers at a handful of labs around the world, the answer appears that it might be yes. There's a little something for you to think about today. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. What's that mean? He wants to climb the stairs and he doesn't want me to hold him. You listen to your mum. Listen to me. <laughs> so there's a marker here which is our point where we can start heading south. As I turn, I'm going to let out the main sheet and the head sail sheet so the sails will go like this and this and this and this. You ease the sheets as you head downwind. I've got the main sheet unlocked because the winds are very variable. They'll just come belting over their sort of bullets of wind. So because of that, I've got this set up so that I can easily ditch the main sheet and it can just go bang. Not really necessary here, but back there it was like really starting to boogie. Yeah. Yep. This was us on the phone to Jimmy Cornell, a well-known sailor. All this peaceful sailing in the Chesapeake was getting a little too easy and our adventurous souls wanted to shake things up. It was one of many phone calls we'd had in the days leading up to this point. We'd been keeping it on the down low, which to us and you means we weren't really filming it, but we were dying inside of excitement. But to organise something like this we felt would take a miracle and it wasn't very likely to happen. So we just tried to go about our days as usual. Mmm, it looks delicious. If you guys are wondering why there's a million wine bottles in our house, no, we are not alcoholics. 
We actually met a wine connoisseur in Solomon's and she gave us like some of her best wines. Her name's Nikki, thank you Nikki. Nikki and Lee, we're gonna be busy. Wind has really died down, so Riley's just put up the code D. Me and Lenny are inside, out of the way, listening to a podcast. What are you doing? <laughs> Look at your son, Riley. <laughs> So just a bit of an update on what's been going on with Lenny lately. So he's 11 months old now and he's taken three steps. We can't get it on film. Even if we try and like lure him over with food or something, he'll, <laughs> he'll, he knows what's going on and he'll just fall straight on the ground and crawl. But yeah, we're very proud. He's definitely not walking yet, but uh, he's getting there. And also Lenny like plays games with me now. Hey, no, you can't have this. Hey, give me that. Tougher, Mum? No. Hey, get this, get this. Where is it? Go on then, you know how to get down. Good boy. You did it. <laughs> so we just lost our wind. We've had to turn on the engines, unfortunately. Now more than ever, Riley is very much so a single-handed sailor. I'm not much help at all. If I bring Lenny outside, I can't really do too many things. Riley does everything himself and it's a lot of work. It's 24-7, you have to be paying attention. So Riley, if you're watching this, we really appreciate what you do. Thanks for keeping me and Lenny happy and the boat floating and safe. Hmm. Very grateful. We should be rocking up to our anchorage pretty soon. I'll show you where we're going. We came from Solomon's today. We went woo woo. We're gonna go up and into here. Somewhere around there. Let it go, just like the ones that came before. Stones rolling back into the ocean. Shake it off, it was only just a cost. Money, 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 can't buy the ocean. When you're watching this now, you will have already seen the videos where we take Greta across the Atlantic. But for us now, we've just heard about all this and we're gearing up to get it all done. I've made more phone calls in the last He's actually four days on his phone 24 than I have in the last year. They said, all right, well, it's up to you to select crew. So I'm like interviewing these The best sailors, sailors yeah. in the world. But I've never been this excited. Yeah, like we have a mission. Rig inspections, phone calls, setting up spare rooms, provisioning. There is a mountain of jobs to do. Our plans have been turned upside down. We yeah. were not expecting to do this. We had everything planned. We were gonna go down to Charleston. We can't go there anymore. Not up, man. Greta and Svante arrived tonight and we're hoping to set sail in the next four days, but you've probably seen these videos already. I'm pretty stressed. Yep. We're gonna get it done though. Anyway, that is the situation as we see it at this point in time. Wish us luck, see you on the other side of the Atlantic. Next week, you'll join us on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in Portugal. Like I said, if you've somehow missed that big chunk of us sailing Greta for 19 days, I'll link that playlist in the description below. But next week, it's just us again and we sail our boat down the coast of Portugal to Lagos for a haul out. I think you're gonna love joining us for this sail. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and please remember to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Storms rolling back into the ocean. Shake it off, it was only just a cost. Money, 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 can't buy the ocean.